way we decided to look at companies is really as a stage gate process. So it's really a two-phase process. So the first uh, gate is how do how do we uh, narrow down the companies to those that are optimally positioned for value extraction out of the market. So we wanted to find out what do these companies have in terms of their own capabilities, is their physical assets, intellectual assets, uh, their, their skill sets, the networks, the aspirations of the company, do all of these match up relative to all the other complementary assets that they need. And, and complementary assets are essentially all their distribution channels, cross licenses, manufacturing facilities, whatever it might be that these companies need to get their product to market and be able to scale that. And so as we're mapping these out on a, on a, on a two by two, I guess, which is our first uh, positioning for value capture diagram, it gives us a sense for those companies that are um, have an opportunity to rapidly grow versus those that have very strong dependencies and other partners in the market versus those that really are, no matter how you're going to slice it, small niche businesses. So we typically retain the top companies and top companies are in the top two quadrants, which means uh, companies that are either licensed businesses, uh, they are uh, uh, partnership type of businesses, uh, heavily dependent on other specialized partners, or rapid growth companies, which means that a lot of their complementary assets are actually fairly generic. So they have a lot of the assets under their control and can scale growth as quickly as possible. So that is the first stage. So now. Typically, we go down, say, from 200 to maybe um, about 80 or so, I mean, that are coming out of that first screen. So now we go really to the down select. And the down select is, happens both at the investor side, so the investors will look at the companies, they will take a look at all the financials associated with these companies, growth, debt, uh, investment they've already received, uh, revenue metrics and, and EBITDA margins, potentially, that type of information. Uh, they come back to us and I validate it in the second screen. And the second screen is, is really the investability analysis or an investment stress test. So in the stress test really means, okay, now we have 80 companies. What fraction of these 80 companies are potentially equity investable? The, as we typically, typically talk about investment in, in, in companies, we have to think about what does the money want? And equity capital has different expectations of how, it, how its capital works than, say, debt capital or than supplier capital or than other types of bootstrapping methods. And we need to sort out the companies that are really equity investable, i.e. high growth, high returns, uh, financial uh, uh, impacts, financial outputs, and then those that are more in a slower growth pa uh, 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 pattern, uh, patient capital type of, of, of uh, investment. And these are more the bootstrap of companies. And then we have companies that are, you know, if they get repositioned, we could probably get them to the point of becoming equity investable companies. So we go from 80 now down to 30 by really sorting out, putting the, the investment stress test on top of them, sorting out the fraction that is equity investable. And typically it's on the order of about 40% or so of the companies that would be in that space. And that's how we get down to about uh, 30 companies in the back end. This says nothing about whether these other companies are no good. These companies are all good, but they're just not equity investable. So they meet different kind of targets. It could be, for example, financeable through convertible debt. They could be financeable by uh, buyers or suppliers of the company, patient capital, social venture capital. Uh, so it's entirely different types of investment methodologies. And then often, or uh, more often than not, we see companies that say, hmm, you put us in the lower right box, which is really the repositioning box. So what kind of feedback can you give us to reposition our company to essentially get up to the space where we could get equity capital or debt capital? You have to take a step back and think about what GCCA is. GCCA is a large organization. It has companies in Asia-Pacific regions in a region in, in Europe and in, in the US. In each of these regions, there is always going to be a mix of different types of capital. The different types of capital, however, are differently defined. Say private equity in Europe is different from private equity in the United States. 
uh, angel and, and, and venture capital investors in, in, in uh, Asia Pacific region have different expectations from those in the United States. So we were thinking, it's like, okay, what we are, so that is, that is one uh, a piece that we needed to have something that is, we need to find a metric that is common among the different regions within GCCA. The other piece of GCCA is that we want to make, our tagline is, making local global. The importance of making local global is that we want to scale companies. We want to connect companies that are belong to one cluster to a different cluster. We want to connect companies in each other's value chains, in clusters' value chains. The only way we can really do that is to start looking at companies that are, one, willing to take risks, going outside of their local, regional, regionally defined areas and moving into other scalable markets abroad, making local global. We need to have companies that have a broader vision on the clean tech market, that scale their products into other markets and are willing to take the risk to bridge cult cultural barriers. And very often you, ha you get that with companies that have taken equity investment, get members on the board of these companies that actually have a broader view on the clean tech market, that actually see what is happening in various different regions of the world. And the underlying driver from governments, which is all about growing the green economy, is about scale. You cannot do that without achieving scale. And you cannot achieve scale unless you got equity capital, smart equity capital deployed in companies that can connect across clusters, that can grow outside of the regional bounds of, say, Ireland or Finland or Switzerland or whatnot. We have to connect into China. We got to connect into, I mean, across uh, Europe and the U.S. And so, again, the scalable companies are the ones that will generate returns and are the, also the ones that usually take equity capital and equity investors on the board to actually see the opportunity and, and grow the broader clean tech uh, uh, economy. We went the first time to the Keystone uh, uh, two-tier process, two-tier selection process in 2011, selected 10 companies. These 10 companies collectively, post the award in, 20, in November 2011, garnered over $250 million in mostly equity capital. There was some structured debt, uh, I believe, uh, Open Hydro had some structured debt. Most of it was equity capital, growth capital, and whatnot. So that is clearly the target where we want to get our companies. That's what we want to highlight. So if we tie the Keystone Compact to the kind of money that pours into these type of companies, we need to apply a stress test that applies to that kind of money that looks at these kind of companies. It's really all about what does the money want, what kind of money is available for scalability. Keystone tells us what kind of company are positioned for that type of money, and clearly we're getting the validation since 2011 that that's the type of money that pours into these companies. Uh, we have to I mean, be very careful that I mean, a lot of investors, particularly equity investors, have gotten burned in getting invested in, in, in pouring their investments in companies that really did not meet the investment stress test for equity capital. And I think what we can do with uh, GCCA in applying this, this investment stress test to a very broad swath of companies coming from all continents really validate and, and help sort out uh, the differentiation between the different types of capital and the companies that match that kind of capital.